So I don't have to convince every, anybody in this room that trade-offs exist. Uh, we especially uh, expect trade-offs between the reproduction, because reproduction is so crucial, and all the other uh, life uh, function. Uh, if so, then uh, especially in women, we should see a relationship between fertility and lifespan. And indeed, this is our own study from Poland in which you could see that regardless whether a woman had high number of sons or high number of daughters or just high number of children, uh, she had reduced lifespan. Uh, some other studies show similar results, but there are also studies that did not de detect any significant relationships between fertility and lifespan. And there are also studies that show a positive relationship. So women who have high fertility have longer lives. So what's going on? Uh, of course, we expect this negative relationship between fertility and lifespan because we know that reproduction is costly. Uh, and the cost of reproduction, we all know about energy, pregnancy, lactation, especially this happening many times during the lifetime, costs a lot. But there are also other costs. Uh, there are nutrients that are used for each reproductive event. Uh, reproduction causes oxidative stress. There are changes in maternal immune system and many other things. Uh, the question is whether those changes have long-term negative consequences or whether they are, they are reversible. So when we study fertility and lifespan, the question is why we see such a diverse results. And I think uh, we have two problems. One problem is in, is in our theoretical framework. And another problem is in our methodology. And few things uh, that are problematic is that we cannot look at all possible costs. When we study relationship between fertility and lifespan, we usually look at the demographic records, often from parish records. We don't have information on all possible costs. We usually only have information on number of children. Breastfeeding is something that is always neglected, and this is very significant cost. Overall energy budgets, women who are in a poor energy budget will experience cost of reproduction differently than women who are well fed. Reproduction increases risk of some diseases, decreases risk of others. So it's possible that it will even out all those risks. And also, women often are not done with reproduction when they, are, they stop having children because they are taking care of grandchildren. So there are some intergenerational costs that nobody is taking into account. Uh, so perhaps we should look at the relationship between, if we want to see the trade-offs between reproduction and other things, we should look at study contemporary populations. Uh, we could, for example, look at the, how aging is uh, increased, whether aging is increased in women who have high levels of uh, reproductive effort, high reproduction. So how, measure, how to measure aging? Well, there are, of course, many different biomarkers. We look, for example, at the levels of chronic inflammation, which is something that occurs in older people. Uh, we work at the rural Poland at Mogilica Human Ecology study site, which is the area of several villages with a population that has a relatively traditional uh, agricultural lifestyle and relatively high fertility. It's high fertility for Europe and for Poland. Uh, so what we did here, uh, reproductive effort, of course, is not only the number of children. Uh, you could look at number of sons and number of daughters because they have slightly different costs, uh, age at first reproduction, interbirth intervals, and breastfeeding. For inflammation, many different things. Uh, here I'm just going to show you three things, seroactive protein, interleukin-6, and tumor necrosis factor. Uh, and what we have here, 
So if we look at the relationship between number of children and inflammation, we see that there is a positive relationship. So those women are post-reproductive. And we just look uh, and we see that the more children they have, the higher levels of uh, inflammation in, in this older age. If we look at that more closely, turns out that number of daughters is completely unimportant, but number of sons is. So the more sons during the lifetime, the higher levels of ER6, TNL-alpha, and CRP. That's good. Well, maybe not for the women, but for us, if we are interested in cost of reproduction. But things are complicated by the existence of genetic factors or genetic trade-offs between reproduction and health. And you heard a lot of, about that, of course, antagonistic pleiotropy, but I was supposed to talk on Thursday, so I would be the, one of the first talking about it, not the last one, so uh, here I am. Uh, there are many genes which have this suggested pleiotropic effect, so they increase uh, fertility at the same time decrease uh, many traits related to house. Uh, one of those genes is uh, EPOE, epolipoprotein uh, encoding gene, and epolipoprotein is very uh, intensely studied molecule because it increases risk of many diseases. So it has this sort of the, the polymorphism. This one is not very important, but if you have EPO3, you are lucky uh, because this is considered neutral for health. If you have EPO4, uh, you have increased risk of cardiovascular diseases, Alzheimer, uh, diabetes, stroke, and so on. 14% of people, on average, have this kind of allele. The fact that those diseases are increased um, is not surprising because this is a molecule involved in uh, cholesterol metabolism. And people who have EPO4, so the beta allele, have increased level of cholesterol. Uh, we did a study on lifestyle and reproductive hormones, and I'm not going to go into detail. For this talk, the only important thing is that we collected saliva sample for daily assessment of estradiol and progesterone levels. Here we are talking about women who are in reproductive age, and we uh, measure and, and we assess genetic polymorphism of EPO4. Why? Well, cholesterol is not always bad. Uh, steroid hormones are made from cholesterol. So uh, the question is that if women who have high, who have EPO4 allele have high levels of cholesterol, uh, do they have higher levels of reproductive steroid hormones? And it turns out that they do. Uh, women who have EPO4 allele, the one that is detrimental for health, have higher levels of progesterone. Uh, you could see the, the upper, upper uh, profile of progesterone. So it's clear that EPOE is involved in uh, both reproduction and in all those health-related um, uh, traits. And it's a gene that has those antagonistic pleiotropic effects. So potential, this is just potential fertility. So increases progesterone is important for potential fertility. Uh, another gene uh, which uh, is very intensely studied, because this is a gene that is suggested as one of the longevity genes, so everybody wants to know everything about it. Uh, it's uh, EL10, which encodes interleukin-10. This molecule has strong anti-inflammatory function. So here, we look at postmenopausal women, and we look at the fertility again and uh, trying to see whether there is any relationship between polymorphism of this gene and fertility. And turns out that, uh, again, one of the genotypes uh, has higher fertility than two other genotypes of this gene. So there is higher number of children, higher number of sons, and much shorter interbirth intervals. 
Why is that? We don't know what's the mechanism. Uh, it's possible that uh, this gene is involved in uh, maternal uh, immunotolerance of the fetus. It's involved in regulation of HPO axis. This could be, we are not sure. We are sure right now that this is also gene with some pleiotropic, antagonistic pleiotropic effects. So genotypes that increase those diseases in old age at the same time have higher fertility when women are younger. So this is clear that there are some genetic-based trade-offs uh, between reproduction and immune function in women. When I became interested in looking at the cost of reproduction, I always studied reproduction. So I knew that this is something that is costly. So I became interested to, to, to see whether there is any effect on aging, any effect of lifespan in women. I thought this is going to be easy. This is not easy. Uh, Steve Stern pointed out in uh, late 80s, uh, in fact, how we should study this, uh, looking at all possible levels. And there is clear that there is some phenotypic level. So we could look at the cost of reproduction, and we could look at the energy and changes, metabolic physiological changes, and how it affects aging or how it affects lifespan. There is also this genetic level when we have a presence of pleiotropic genes. And there is also what's in between uh, that was called intermediate structure. Uh, so when we try to understand what's going on, we could have a situation in which we see the relationship between fertility and lifespan, but it could be purely based on the fact that there are some pleiotropic genes. Uh, and reproduction, the cost of reproduction, may have nothing to do with it. So unless we look at this comprehensively, unless we look at genetic stuff and phenotypic stuff, and uh, I think we will not understand whether reproduction for women, reproduction in a sense of having children and having cost, is really detrimental to health uh, or not. Uh, so if you are interested in trade-offs, uh, uh, this is the book that uh, was published a year and a half ago in which uh, I talk about trade-offs and many different things related to uh, reproduction, mostly in women. Um, and I would like to thank my collaborators, my friends uh, who helped in this project and some people who gave us money. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Jasienska, and we have time for two questions. Thank you. Would you predict that the proportion of these alleles would vary by population based on the extrinsic mortality in that environment? Um, I'm not sure. You, you t you're talking about like uh, uh, APOE and, and uh, all those. Uh, I'm not sure. Would you predict that? It's, it's, that's, um, because the, the differences between populations are not very high in the presence of those uh, alleles. Uh, they vary, but it's, 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 it's quite similar. So I'm not sure. And, and we are talking about old age diseases usually. So I'm not sure if, if extrinsic mortality is important here. But I, I don't know. I never thought about that. Very quickly, uh, is the allele you cited for IL-10 associated with greater fertility, uh, does it increase IL-10 or decrease IL-10? Do you know? Uh, allele which... Uh, the the IL-10 allele, which you said was associated with greater fertility, do you know if it increases or decreases IL-10 production? This is the, the uh, AA genotype is something that uh, increases uh, production. So this is, has strong inflammatory action, so it sort of makes sense. 
Uh, okay, um, two comments. On the APOE4 by population, I know of some studies of APOE4 amongst um, Brazilian indigenous populations that differ widely, and, and that's mostly by genetic drift. So there's no, no way to know if, in fact, it's going to be due to external mortality in, in any particular case. Um, with IL-10, according to the data you showed, that doesn't seem to be antagonistic pleiotropy because it seemed that it was beneficial early and beneficial late, which means it's just beneficial. Have to be deleterious late. And the data you showed didn't suggest that. Why is it beneficial? Uh, no, in fact, it's, it's, it's the opposite. It's sort of the, the allele which is beneficial for reproduction is the allele that is detrimental for, uh, that is detrimental for health. So I, I, you, I thought you said that IL-10 was a longevity assurance gene. It was improving inflammation response. Yes, but depending on an allele, depending on a genotype. So some genotypes are increasing, have strong anti-inflammatory ac uh, actions. Some genotypes are much lower inflammatory action. So we, we are dealing with different genotypes. So some people are lucky because they have a strong uh, anti-inflammatory responses, and some people uh, lower. Uh, but you'd still have to show that IL-10 alleles were having a negative impact on survivorship at and late I, life. If they're not, then it's just beneficial. I think we're going to end it there. Um, and thank you for a great session, a great, a great talk. Thank you.